This video is proudly sponsored by DigimonCard.io for all your Digimon card, deck building, deck list, card pricing, and discussion needs. Hey everyone, Eggman here with a, another video. And today we're going to talk about the Tabletop Simulator, or more specifically, how to play the Digimon card game on it. This has been a really good tool for me for making content and looking at cards before they get released, especially when there are delays for products. So uh, whenever I make content for it or do some Twitch streams with it, people are always asking, like, how do we set this up? What's the thing? You know, isn't there a barrier of entry for this? And uh, this is really easy to set up, but you have to kind of know how to do it. So I did make a video for this like back in January of last year, but uh, there's been some updates and everything else. So I wanted to make another video going over how to get this, how to set up an import deck list, and how to kind of maneuver in like some best of practices. So that's what this video is today, and I hope you guys enjoy it. So let's go to first how to set up the actual uh, tabletop simulator itself. To acquire Tabletop Simulator, it is on Steam for normally $20, but it does go on sale from time to time to like $10 and sometimes even $5. Uh, I highly recommend this client, especially since, you know, it is just for an unofficial mod for the game, but it's just a great 3D, you know, playground for a lot of card games, board games. I highly recommend it. I've always, obviously I've had like 400 hours and this is not just good for like BT8, which is the set that's coming out right now for us as this video is being made, but a lot of other ones down the line. So once you have it downloaded, uh, you just have to go to the workshop and you have to just find the mod that we're using the v2 automated automated digimon card game uh, there's also going to be a link to this in the description as well so you just have to hit the subscribe button for it so uh, and also big shouts to uh, zaffy who made the original one cake who made the original version one of the automated one and then also zonda for making the additional one with the new bt8 plus cards uh, since the bt7 was cut off on the other one so this this is really nice and uh, from there we just have to boot up the game next when you boot it up all you have to do is a create button so at least if you're the host of it so uh pretty much do multiplayer you can set whatever you want and you go to create server and then you just go through your game so it should be the one in your workshop it should be the one right here at least if you have any more you can even see like the the previous one so we just hit here we load the the game workshop file and here we go we have the entire thing here it's it's very very nice to to have like a 3d space to go over we're going to talk about how to kind of maneuver this and best practices with moving cards uh but the the next thing you guys kind of have to want to do is to how to import decks so we're going to do that separately right now I see a lot of people get tripped up or intimidated when importing decks, but honestly, it's pretty easy once you know how to do it and uh, you can go from there. So you do have to make a list on a third party deck building website. So I've got my Kaiser nail list from uh, digimoncard.io. You just have to hit the export deck button right here. Uh, traditionally, you would use this one to kind of transfer between simulators and using other simulators, but there's specifically one for tabletop simulator here. So it's the one here. It looks like an array of cards. You just hit the copy and and then you take this to the simulator. Once we have our deck list array, all we have to do is go to our notebook here. We just have to paste it where it is. There's also like in the bot bottom right, the kind of instructions here as well, but you just import it there and then you hit this import deck button here. And then it's gonna go through all the card pool and manually make the list that it get, you know you gave it. So it takes a little bit. And if you also are like, you know, imp importing when there's also someone else on the server. It might lag a bit, it might kick you out, but eventually you'll get it. Here's the list that we have for you guys uh, that we said we were gonna import it. We can search through here. We can find the Budamond eggs and take them out uh, since we wanna normally keep our eggs separately, but you can import both of them at the same time. There's two, three, where's the last one? There's the boy. Uh, and then you can just group them together, put them on top. And then what I like to do too, is I'd like to save this as an object. So do here, uh, do tests, you have folders, which I have a bunch of folders for everything. And from there, you just hit save. So you don't have to import it every time like this manually. You can just go to your objects here, saved objects. You'll see again, I have a bunch of folders for all the you know metas and decks that I've been going through. So BT8, we can hit test and right there, we can import an exact copy of that list. Now that we have a deck imported, that's normally the biggest hurdle for a lot of people, but the, you know, the mechanics and movements through this uh, are a little bit specific, but uh, we're just going to go through all of it. Uh, we're going to start kind of simple, but at the end, I hope you guys learn a trick or two to do it. Uh, normally just WASD, W-A-S-D, you can move around here. Uh, you can also middle click on the mouse wheel and you can drag the entire world around. Uh, left clicking will let you do a box, which you can collect anything here. 
uh, and then right click, you can move the camera. So if you want to change what your camera looks like there too. Uh, additionally too, uh, when you join the room, you will be the moderator, but you can change colors. So if you want to be on the blue side, you can. If you want to go back to the white side, it has to be blue or white just based on how it is. Uh, you can also be the Game Master too. So Game Master is normally what I do when I do my stream. So they get to see both players' hand. Normally you only get to see one and go from there. You can also, uh, I don't have another person, but when, when you right click on someone else, you will need to promote them to be able to import objects. So be careful to do that uh, if you have friends who, who need that option for it. So that is the basic movement for it, uh, but there are some kind of tricks to kind of move around cards and also specifically for this. So uh, we're going to do this actually real quick. Uh, so if you quickly just press the left key and drag, you will draw one card. But if you drag the whole thing, uh, or if you hold long enough, you'll pick up the whole thing. So there we go. So we have the entire 54 cards, or we have one card here. Uh, additionally, too, if you want to, I'm going to take these eggs out real quick, put them over here. Uh, if you want an easy way to shuffle, you can just wiggle it back and forth enough, and it will detect you want to try to shuffle, and it will do that. Additionally, you can do that with the R key, uh, and that will shuffle it too. Uh, some additional soft keys you want to learn are flip. So pressing F, you will flip the cards up and down and you can go on the other side. So that's handy for what you're doing. Uh, we can also turn the card. So obviously that's important for Digimon where tapping is a thing. Uh, you use that with Q and E. So uh, it depends on your rotation degrees. So if I'm only at 30 degrees, pressing it once only does it 30, 45, a little bit faster. 90 is fine. Uh, sometimes I like to do 45 in case like I do like a slightly long press for it so uh, but 90 is normally the standard for there so you can rotate your cards from there and, and that's super handy uh, we're going to go to the uh, we're going to move it over here to our deck list uh, and so the buttons on the left are kind of handy so to start the game you can press recover five times so one two three four five go from there uh, and then if you want to draw you can press the draw button five times additionally if you press the five, whatever number key you want above the deck, that's how many you want. So if I press the five key over here, you will see the cards are in my hand. They're physically here in my hand, but they will also be at the bottom of your screen here. Uh, this is handy. And those are cards, so you can pick them up and you can move them from there and go from there. Additionally, too, let's say you want to know what your cards do. If you hold the Alt key and hover over, it will make a larger version of the card. So you can see the full card and read the effects for it. Moving on, so doing, let's go to our hatching phase. So uh, we can do a hatch here. Or actually, first, let's do let's do this. So uh, let's say we want to do a mulligan, right? Mulligans are really important. There isn't like a fantastic way to do it, but the best way to do it in my mind is you just hover, make the box around all of them uh, to put them all into the field. You can flip them with F uh, and then you can do the group button. So that's G, it puts all the cards grouped together and go from there and then you can just drag the deck over on top of it bonk right there's that 45 cards put it back to where the deck spot is and then you draw five again and so honestly this is a better hand for us too and we're going to start the game so we'll do the hatch button so this will automatically hatch for you guys uh we can put ganamon there so it takes a little bit of particular there is like some snapping for it so i can move the entire stack for it uh, it takes a little bit of practice, but once you get it down, it feels good. Uh, and then we can do the draw there and, and everything else. So let's say, what else do we have here? We don't really have a good reveal card, but let's say, let's say we take damage. We can do the security check here. So it shows here, here's a Garurumon. It's a 5k. Uh, so you can compare it and you can go there. Let's say we need to recover another uh, with security there. We're fine there. And then additionally, we do have the memory gauge here. This is really easy. You just pick it up and then it's also, it snaps to each one of the numbers. So let's say I play the Cordramon here for six. I give my opponent six and then I draw two cards. So one, two, and there we go. Additionally, some other things, let's say, uh, let me go through it. So if you right click a stack of cards, you can do search. And let's say I get a Davis, which is conveniently the next card for us. And it goes into our hand upside down, so we press F to flip it. We play Davis, and let's say we want to see the top three cards. We just pressed reveal three times, so one, two, and three. Uh, we get the Anjumon to our hand because it is blue. And then we have to put these cards there. So we put them together, press F to flip, put the deck over it, and there we go. Um, I think that is pretty much the, the biggest thing for it. So we can move Gondamon here. 
uh, we can hover him. We press the Q and E key to do the rotation, to do suspended and whatnot. And that is that is really a big thing. So let's say it's the end of the game. I want to reset the biggest way and I'll just, let me see, let me just draw six and move them here. So we have a big mess of cards and everything and we want to reset the game. Normally what I just do is I, honestly also the unsuspend button is really nice too to start your turn, but we we just hover the, the big rectangle above all our cards. We press group right here, puts them all together in one. We can move it back over here. We can right click to search. We can find our eggs and then from there we can just pull them out, make our egg deck again and we're good to go. So that is the, the basic mechanics for everything that I do. It's pretty simple again and starts feeling uh, a little bit more comfortable when you get used to it, but I do know there's that barrier for it. And obviously nothing's going to compare to using straight up cards. And that's all I really have for this video. Again, I hope you guys got something from it and you guys are able to enjoy playing Tabletop Simulator's mod for Digimon. Again, shout outs to the creators for this. And if you guys have any questions about how to do this or anything else, please let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer your questions. But that's gonna be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you all next time. Damn it.